Okay, now that we know the right diameter of pad, the right thickness of pad to use, and you have some idea of the appropriate glue that we're going to use with the appropriate style pad, there are a couple more questions we have to answer, and then we're going to go right on here. I've got the key removed, and so I'm, I'm just about ready to install this pad, but I've got two more questions to answer. The first thing is, how am I going to check that pad once I finish uh, installing it? And in order to do that, I'm going to need a little item that I'm sure that, uh, that maybe some of you may be familiar with. I don't know. Most musicians are, are not really very savvy with stuff like this, but you'll probably need something like this. I'm not sure where you'll get it, uh, but uh, probably, you know, any number of stores. And some people might look at you a little weird when you buy it, but, uh, and they won't believe you uh, when you say what it's for. But uh, this is probably the best thing to, to use to check the pad to see that it's seated properly. And um, what I've done with a, one of these little sheets uh, is I've cut a wedge of paper like that. And with that wedge of paper, I'm going to check all four corners of the pad once I seat it on the tone hole. And I'm going to be looking for an even pull all the way around as I check all the way around the circumference of the pad as it's seated on the tone hole. And if I find one side that's light, that means I'm going to have to heat the glue and melt the pad and get the pad to float in a little bit better until I get an equal, uh, an equal pull all the way around. That tells me that the pad is well seated. All right, well that's simple enough, right? Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to decide on some kind of medium of heat to melt that glue. And the thing I prefer is butane. Um, I have a couple of different butane set up and uh, you know you can get a butane set up that's not expensive at all. I've got one I'm going to show you. But you know some pads have been effectively installed especially in emergencies with a little guy like this. Let me see if I can get a good close-up so you can see this is a butane lighter and uh, this is actually one I bought in a, con in a convenience store. And um, let's, there you go. And it has a, a blue flame. I don't know if you can see that blue flame, flame or not, but uh, with the lighting here, but uh, believe me, it's blue. Now, why do you want a blue flame? You want a blue flame for a couple different reasons. First of all, it's a high temperature flame, and that means you don't have to leave the heat on the pad cup very long in order to get the, the glue properly melted. And the second thing is, is that it's smokeless. If you try to heat the pad in with a candle or with a, a match or something like that, you're going to smoke up the pad pretty bad. And at such low temperature, that orange flame that it has is such low temperature, it's going to take a long time on the pad cup to even melt the glue. So it's very inconvenient. The best thing is to use one of these. Now, it's really hard to see the pad. You have to really be fast to know what you're doing to see the pad with one hand here and one hand with the flame. So if you've got a buddy or a friend uh, or a rent friend, uh, then they can, you know, when you need the flame, they can hold the flame for you like that. And uh, then you have both hands you can work with. Uh, but since I don't have a, any friends and uh, I'm a too cheap to rent a friend. Uh, I have a little item like this. This is a butane um, lighter, I guess, if you want to call it that, butane lighter. And it sets at an angle. And I, I got it from J.L. Smith. It's not really that expensive. And it would be certainly something you could use the rest of your life. Um, once you get used to using butane, it's very easy to use. And you can do a lot of padding with this. Uh, it's full of butane right now, and uh, I'm going to start it up. And to start it up is uh, is uh, pretty pretty simple. Um, you uh, turn on the flame, and boom, there's our flame. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to be able to to adjust that flame so it's a very very small flame indeed. Okay. And once we get that small flame, I'm going to be able to start the padding process. Okay, right here is the pad that I'm going to use. And I'm going to put 
a little pinprick in the side of it. This is a very thin pad. And so uh, I know I'm going to have to build it up quite a bit. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a fair amount of, of George's glue and, um, and the pellets. By experience, you get to know just how many pellets to put in there, how many pellets are really going to do the job for you. If you put in too many, then you'll have stuff oozing out all, all, over the clarinet. And if you put in too little, then the pad won't seek. But I think I've got in a pretty good amount here for starters. And um, I'm going to turn the flame around this way so it doesn't get me. And I'm holding the cup. And so I melt the glue by actually heating the pad cup. And uh, that melts up real quick. I'm going to throw in one more pellet just for fun. That's why we do this, right? Just for fun. And I'm going to lay in my pad there. I'm dropping that key because it's getting a little hot. Normally, uh, I use a cloth to hold the key because the heat transfers pretty, pretty rapidly through the key. There we go. All right, now we've got our pad all set up there, and um, as soon as it cools down a little bit, it's going to be ready to mount, and then we'll be ready to seat it onto the tone hole. Okay, I'm um, now mounting the, the key. And actually before I begin heating the pad, actually you don't heat the pad, you heat the pad cup, I'm going to go and do a little check here to see uh, how it's seated there. It's tugging good there in the front, say that's, let's say that's the south. Uh, over there on the east, it looks pretty good. Uh, nothing there in the north. There's no, very little coverage, almost no coverage at all. And, and almost no coverage over here either. All right, so the whole pad is, is leaning this way and that way. Now, there are two ways that I can uh, manipulate this pad. The first way is just by heating the glue long enough to where I know the glue is in a kind of molten state, not a completely liquid state, but a molten state, and then closing down and just using the spring pressure to, to move the pad gently around onto the tone hole. And that's the first thing I'll try. And if that doesn't work, I have to do some more movement with the pad, then I'm going to use the pad slick. The pad slick is something I can get in there and move it around. But let's see what we can do just with the uh, just with the strength of the spring and the uh, uh, and the the molten uh, George's glue, so uh, I'm going to hold this on the flame. Now George's glue uh, with the blue flame like this is going to be about three or four counts, and it's going to be pretty pretty good. So I'm going to hold it up, hold the key cup there, and heat the key cup, and always protect the pad. By the way, you don't want to burn the pad. So here we go, one, two three, four. Now that's completely liquid now and I'm going to gently close that pad down on the key cup or on the tone hole. Gently close it down there and I can see it floating to the back and I can also see a little material oozing out there so let's see if we can get that cleaned up while it's in a liquid form. That's good. Okay and get a little more. The more you can clean the pad up while it's everything's in a liquid form, the better it's going to look. Okay, now I got it down there. I'm going to just tap it a little bit. Just a gentle tap. And you know, that may, just that alone, may have seated the pad. That's floating the pad in. Pretty much floating it in. And if the floating it in doesn't work, then let me turn this flame down a little bit. It's making an awful lot of noise. 
All right, and now I'll check this. Good in the front. Oh, very good in the back now. Excellent over there. And very good in the west. I think that we've got a perfect seat there. That's very good. See, we lucked out. We lucked out. So we just floated that in and gently closing the spring down and using the spring tension. And we've got a pad that's perfectly seated. And that'll, that's going to last for years and years and years. So, there you go. It's that easy to see the pad. So, what do you need to be successful at this? You need the right tools. You need the right equipment. And you need to practice a little bit. And that means getting a pawn shop clarinet or some, some uh, old clarinet that you have that you can practice on, that you can fold, mutilate, staple, bend, and spindle, uh, and make all your mistakes on that. And uh, once you get proficient at it, you're going to be um, pretty well on your way to being able to take care of pad emergencies and do uh, some good padding on your clarinet and on your students' clarinets. And they're going to think you're Superman with a cape when you come in and you can save the day and, uh, and they've had a pad drop out and, and you, can, uh, you can fix it and, and make it seat really well. It's going to help your teaching if you teach. Uh, because uh, you're going to save some lessons if a student comes in with a clarinet that's not in good, good repair, good shape. In fact, I began actually doing repairs when I was teaching in universities, uh, university, and my students couldn't couldn't get good repair work done, or, and or it took forever to get it done, and I would lose a lot of lesson time. So, uh, anyway, um, this is going to help you a lot. Have control over your own equipment and help you have control and. Uh, facilitate your teaching with uh, your students um, and it's uh, I found it fun to do and so um, the right equipment and uh, and practice a little bit until you get familiar with this you'll get a little experience about how much heat you're putting on the pad as to what kind of glue you're using and all that and that's a matter of experimentation so get a clarinet you can experiment with and you're going to be um, you're going to be cooking with gas, uh, actually uh, butane.